Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with another A-level chemistry exam question walkthrough. This time we're looking at electrochemistry, focusing on electrode potentials and electrochemical cells. You can download the question in the description, have a go at this yourself, and then watch this video and see me modeling my thoughts, which I will write down in blue as well as saying them out loud. And you can see how to get the actual marks by looking out for what I write in green, where I'll itemize each mark on a bullet point by bullet point basis. Okay, so in this 12 mark question, what we're going to take a look at, first of all, is an example of an electrochemical series. It's really common for you to be presented with an electrochemical series, so there's no need to memorise any of these, you just need to memorise the rules. And so rule number one is each of these reactions is called a half equation, and they are always shown in the reduction direction. So in other words, this vanadium 3 plus can gain an electron and become vanadium 2 plus and where the electro potential is shown on the right hand side is minus 0.26 and so whilst they are all shown as reduction half equations they can go backwards it's just the value for the electro potential tells you the tendency of the particular chemicals on the left hand side to gain electrons and therefore for them to be reduced and so this value of plus 1.52 is the highest number in the table. They're normally organized in an ascending pattern. And what that means is this manganate seven is the best oxidizing agent in the table because it is the one that's got the greatest tendency to go in the forwards direction. And that's a really common question for them to ask you, which is the best oxidizing agent or the reducing agent? And so when they've been given to you in an ascending pattern, the diagonally opposite end will be the best reducing agent and we justify that by it having the smallest electro potential meaning it's got the worst potential to go in the forwards direction in other words where the vanadium would get reduced which means it's got the greatest tendency to go in the backwards direction and so on the left hand side this is where you will find the oxidizing agents so if you're asked what's the best oxidizing agent it's the ones on the left and the best reducing agents are the ones on the right so anything that's on this side is not an oxidizing agent. So don't go looking over here if you're asked what's the best oxidizing agent. It won't be one of these. These are the reducing agents. So let's look at the actual question. Now we've found our way around the electrochemical series a little bit. The first question says here is the conventional representation of a cell. And you'll notice that we've got a salt bridge in the middle. We've got platinum on the outside because the solutions on the left and solutions on the right, there aren't any conducting electrodes there. So we need inner platinum electrodes. And we've been asked to calculate the EMF for this reaction. So what we need to do is we need to find the half equation that involves the H2SO3. And there we find it up here. And the electro potential is 0.17. And then we find the Fe3 plus Fe2 plus half equation, and here it is, plus 0.77. And so the EMF is simply the difference between those two numbers, which is 0.6. And we can just double check that because there's also the rule, which is that the EMF for a cell is the electro potential for the thing on the right minus the electro potential for the thing on the left. And then that checks out because it's 0.77 minus 0.17, and we still get 0.6 it will typically be a positive EMF unless they're trying to catch you out and get you to suggest that a reaction wouldn't actually happen. And that would be the case if the EMF came out as being a negative value, the direction as implied by the cell wouldn't actually happen. And then it says write in a half equation for the oxidation process occurring at the negative electrode of this cell. So there's two ways of answering this. The negative electrode, first of all, is going to be the one with the smaller electrode potential. And that's the one that's written on the left. And typically that is the one where oxidation happens. The other way of working this through is by remembering that if the conventional representation of the cell has been drawn correctly, what will happen is this reduced form on the left hand side of this half cell will then turn into this oxidized form and this oxidized form will turn into this reduced form. But we've been asked here to write the equation for what's happening at the negative electrode, so this one. So simply, this will be turning into this. However, the rules for half equations still stand that we learnt in year 12, and that is that we first of all need to make sure that we're balanced in terms of non-oxygen and hydrogen, and we are. 
we need to then balance for oxygen by adding water to one side to make the oxygens the same, and we need a water molecule on the left-hand side. Then we need to balance for hydrogen by adding H plus to the right-hand side, so we need to put four in because we've got two H's in the water that we've just added, and we already had two anyway. And then last of all, we need to add electrons to balance the charge. So we've currently got no charge on the left-hand side, and we've got two minus and four plus on the right-hand side, so we need to add a further two minus, in other words, two electrons, to make this balanced. And so we'll have one mark for the EMF, and we'll get a second mark for this half equation. Then they've given us a new cell, and on this occasion we've got hydrogen peroxide and oxygen on the left, we still need platinum because we've still not got a metal, and we've got iodate and iodine on the right-hand side, still platinum because we need that inert conductor. We've been asked to write an equation for the spontaneous cell reaction. So on this occasion, we actually need to turn hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and iodate into iodine. And so you've actually already been given the full half equations here and here. And so it's just a case of balancing those for electrons and cancelling them out. But you don't always get given them. Sometimes you might be presented with a cell diagram and you might be asked to write the equation just simply from this alone. So I'll show you that method as well now. And so I've put those two as the beginnings of half equations here. And so following the same approach that we had in the previous question, we need to balance the first equation by adding two hydrogen ions to the right hand side because the oxygen atoms were already balanced. And then because we've now increased the right-hand side's charge to plus two, we need to add two electrons to the right-hand side as well. Now that one's balanced. Then we have to move on to the second equation. And first of all, the iodine isn't balanced. So balance the iodine first. Now we've got six oxygen atoms on the left. We need to add six H2O on the right. We've now got 12 hydrogen on the right. We need to add 12 hydrogen ions on the left. And now the left-hand side is a total charge of plus 10. Once those 12 H pluses have cancelled out those two negatives. And so we need to add 10 electrons to the left-hand side as well. And so now we've got those two half equations. The overall equation is much easier. We can see that 10 electrons are being gained in the bottom half equation. And only two electrons are being lost in the first one. So the first principle that we need to use here is we need to have our electrons as being the same multiple, so 10. So we need to multiply the top equation by 5 and the bottom equation is already correct. And so now last of all, all we need to do is add these two half equations together and simplify for anything that's present on both sides of the equation. So for instance, we've got electrons here and here, they're both going from both sides. And also we need to watch out here for the hydrogen ions because we're losing 10 in the first reaction and we're using 12 in the second reaction. And so overall, we're going to lose 10 hydrogen ions from both sides. So overall, we're going to have two H plus ions on the left hand side, along with the 5H2O2 and the two iodate ions, and producing 5O2, iodine, and 6H2O overall. And then the final question on this page says, give one reason why the EMF of this cell changes when the electrodes are connected and a current flows. And the answer to this is that the concentration of the ions are going to change once this electrochemical cell is used to generate a current. And so what that means is the conditions are no longer standard conditions, and so the electropotentials are going to change. When the electropotentials change, the EMF is going to change. And so for one mark here, you can just say that the concentrations of the ions is changing. Or you can say that the concentration of the ions are no longer standard conditions. Remember, one molar solutions is standard conditions. And the EMF, by definition, is determined when no current flows. And so we're contradicting that definition. And then the question goes on to ask us to state how, if at all, the EMF of this standard cell will change if the surface area of each platinum electrode is doubled. Well, that's a complete red herring of a question because it's not going to affect it. Provided you've got some platinum in contact with your solution in your half cell, you're going to get the same electropotential as you would if double the area was submerged. And so we just need to say unchanged. What's a more interesting question, and you can tell that it is because we're getting three marks here, is they're asking us to state how, if at all, the EMF of this cell will change 
if the concentration of the iodate ions is increased. So we need to explain our answer. So I'm going to start with the explanation and then we'll get to the change. And so we can see up here in the equation that the iodate ions are on the left hand side. If we increase the concentration of iodate ions, what we're doing is we're increasing the number of electron acceptors on the left hand side, which means the potential to accept electrons is going to go up. And so this electropotential is going to increase. You could also think of it as an equilibrium. They're not written as equilibria here, but you could think of it as an equilibrium. And if you increase the concentration of something on the left hand side, Le Chatelier's principle says that this equilibrium is going to shift to the right. Anytime you make the equilibrium shift to the right, that means the electropotential is going to go up. And so now, since we're pairing our iodate ions with our hydrogen peroxide, which is this, this equation here, and that the hydrogen peroxide is the smaller electropotential and therefore the negative electrode, what we're doing is we're making the biggest number bigger and the smaller number stays the same. And so that will have the effect of making the difference larger between the two. And that's what the EMF is, the difference between the two electropotentials. And so the answer that we need to say for one mark is that the EMF will therefore increase and then we need to say that the equilibrium will have shifted to the right or displaced to the right. And that's because electrons are more readily accepted. Or you could just simply say that more reduction is occurring. Or probably you could also just simply say this electropotential is getting bigger. And then the final question on this paper is, I think, a tricky question. And I think it's something to really keep on the lookout for. And I think on this occasion, maybe they are leading you by the hand through to this fact that there is something slightly funny going on but sometimes you have to work it out for yourself and the reason and that's actually the reason why I picked this question because I think it's good and tricky at the end here and so what they're telling us is that we've got vanadium 2 plus and that's here and it's reacting with potassium manganate 7 which is diagonally at the bottom and so that means that this reaction is going to have a huge EMF of 1.78 and so what will happen is the manganate will turn into manganese and the V2 plus will turn into V3 plus. And we can think in an exam where we're not thinking totally straight, job done, move on to the next question. But that's not the case here. And vanadium is a classic example where this kicks in. And that's because we've turned V2 plus into V3 plus, but V3 plus occurs on the right hand side lower down. And it's still got a far lower electropotential than the manganate. And so what that means is the V3 plus will turn into this VO2 plus ion. And it's not over there either because VO2 plus appears here. And so that VO2 plus can be further oxidized to VO2 1 plus. And so overall, the vanadium has gone from V2 plus to VO2 plus. And so that's the formula of the species present at the end, that VO2 1 plus. The vanadium's oxidation state there is nice and straightforward. We've got minus 2 and minus 2 from the two oxygen atoms. And so it's plus 1 overall. So the vanadium must be cancelling out those two oxygen and leaving one left over. So that means the vanadium is plus 5. And so for the half equation for this, the V2 plus is where we begin with the vanadium, the VO to one plus is where we finish. So the vanadium's already balanced, put two water molecules on the left hand side. We then need to put four hydrogen ions on the right hand side. And last of all, we need to balance for charge. Currently the left hand side is two plus and the right hand side is five plus. So we just finish this off by adding three electrons to the right hand side. And now this is balanced. One mark for each of these points. Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of this video. Hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.